Welcome to this edition of Abled and Unair, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. Arlene Seiler. And on this um, program today, coming up on this edition, we focus on we focus on what if you need support? How do we get those supports if we're special needs? From everything from housing to employment. With us to discuss this and very many issues like this is Executive Director Joshua Smith of Green Mountain Support Services. Welcome. Thank you very much, Able Lawrence. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Arlene, thank you. Thank you. What is the missions and goals well, of Green Mountain Support Services? Well, first I'd like to say thank you for inviting me on the program. <coughs> it was a, a very nice of you. And also I wanted to thank you for helping us out for on our, our third annual Cerebral Palsy Conference. Mm -hmm. Abled on air was 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 there and was also did a breakout session mm -hmm. that was that was um, very well uh, uh, we had good feedback from so thank you very much for that thank you um, and so you know what we do what does Green Mountain Support Services do mm -hmm. so ultimately one one of the things that and, and I'm sure you've talked about it before when you've had you know you know Monica on you had Mary Moulton on you've had some other people on that were part of this um, um, this agency system. Yep. And we were formed, uh, and before to talk about Greenmount Support Services, I kind of have to talk about the closing of Brandon Training School and, yep. and mm -hmm. how that all that happened. So, you know, one of the things that we talk about in Vermont is that we are, you know, you know, uh, we're 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 an innovative and we're we're a strong state um, that is extremely progressive culturally speaking and. One of the things that we've done that no one, not a lot of people talk about is that Vermont was the first state to close down, to completely and utterly deinstitutionalize. Mm -hmm. There's only 11 states in the country right now that are, have completely deinstitutionalized. Since we're talking about deinstitutionalization, what, in your opinion, what is the definition so our viewers can know what deinstitutionalization really means? So basically, is that what what that what that entails is that you, you, you based off of somebody's disability, you are segregated mm -hmm. from the okay. rest of society. Look at me, well, yeah. yeah. So you're segregated from the rest <laughs> of society, mm -hmm. and what that. And, and Brandon Training School was was the was closed in 1993. So we've about 25 years since we actually. Um, so it's only been 25 years mm -hmm. that we've we've we got we deinstitutionalized. So what that means is that it doesn't matter if you have red hair, you wear hearing aids, you wear glasses, or you have an intellectual disability. You deserve to be a part of your own community. That it's we are only stronger as as you know as Vermont when everybody has the same accessibility to everything else, your local hardware store, your local coffee shop, your, your, your grocery store, and your, you know, your local churches and, and, and synagogues and whatnot. So everybody is able to um, access and be a part of that community. Mm -hmm. So we're, Vermont was the first state to do that. We said, you know what, it doesn't matter that you have a disability, you deserve to know your neighbors, you deserve to be treated like everybody else. Are there any states that are still in, in states in the union that are having people in institutions still? There's 39. 39. 39 states. There's only 11 states that have deinstitutionalized. Mm. So there's still a lot that at that at when you're as young as six months old, you get you get incarcerated because you have a disability. At six months, that's still happening today in the United States. So for us in Vermont, this is not a big deal. Like it's the, it, you know, it is a big deal. No, it's not a big deal to have a disability here. Like it, nobody can, Like it's, it's one of those things where, it's, as I say, it's it's just as different as having red hair or wearing mm -hmm. glasses or yeah, anything right. else. So okay. Now, what has been your experience in the field of special needs? Well, I get my. I'm I'm a native Vermonter. Mm -hmm. I'll be clear that I am. I'm an eighth generation Vermonter, mm -hmm. uh, and so I have. I've been you know conceived, born, and raised in Vermont, and I only remember one of those. And <laughs> uh, one of the, one mm -hmm. of the you know so my being a ham again. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the one of my things is that after I, I left Vermont for about 15 years, I worked overseas for the Peace Corps and Doctors Without Borders and mm -hmm. other places like that, mm -hmm. um, relief institutions. 
relief agencies. And so I, it was a natural fit for me to come back here um, and, and to do a lot of advocacy and do a lot of work for um, an education and for people um, that, that aren't treated generically as the same as everybody else. So it was, yeah. and being in Vermont, coming back home to Vermont mm -hmm. um, was a natural fit for me, mm -hmm. um, culturally speaking. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so being now at the conference, yeah. uh, there was booths everywhere, and you know, uh, there were you know a lot of organizations. And one of the things that you're great with, uh, with that I've noticed, you've you've spoken to me um, about um, you know people that work in the trenches of um, people with special needs, yeah. the, the DSPs, uh, yeah. uh, you know, direct care professionals. Yeah. How important is it to have uh, really great staff when you're dealing with, because you're an executive director, yeah. how, how, is it, how important is it when, mm. when, you, when you have staff that's trained yeah. to work with yeah. special needs? Because many oftentimes, you hear in the news, you know, um, bus matrons hurting people with special needs. Uh, Recently, a police officer, in my opinion, a, two, uh, guy out of the, the a person in a wheelchair in bus. prison, and, and things that you hear yeah. about um, in the news, uh, shootings. In how are you going to shoot people with special needs? How are you going to shoot an autistic kid? He is unarmed, he's not herbal, yeah. and this is in Chicago. How the heck is he going to... So what is your opinion on those issues? So that's a good point. And I would say that the, the, the main piece of that is that when you have an integrated society where everybody is a part of that, mm -hmm. it becomes normal to see someone with autism. It becomes normal to see someone in a wheelchair. The, the, if the more you pull people away that are different, the more you have this them mentality instead of a we mentality. Mm -hmm. So, so the more we have people trained and working together with 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 people with you know that are that are, have hearing issues that have sight issues that have um, mobility issues and you know that have you know like an intellectual disability it doesn't matter everybody should still be a part of their own community the more you see people with with different backgrounds and different experiences and different abilities the more you put them together in one mm -hmm. in one community it becomes normal so you see these issues is that why is this still prejudice, though? It shouldn't be. Well, it shouldn't be, but here's the thing. When I said there's 39 states that's still institutionalized, you still have these people away from, you still have people away from society. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and that's, the, that's the biggest piece. Mm -hmm. and, and I say you bring up the point about um, training. Um, a really good friend of mine said in a, in a meeting one day when, um, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, a group of us agencies, we, we gather together on a, on a on a monthly basis, mm -hmm. and the, the the concept of training comes up, and they said, um, you know, you know the, you know the retention rate is so so low, mm -hmm. the turnover rate is so high. Yeah. We have to keep training people, and then you know one person says it costs too much, it costs too much to train people, and it says there's what what's what you know it's it's bad. You you, you people come in and you train them, mm -hmm. and then they leave, and then yeah. a really good friend of mine says. It could be worse. Mm -hmm. You couldn't train them, and they stay. Oh. That's worse. Yeah. So you yeah, always, you never having you never assume that you hire exactly. You never assume that you're going to hire someone and they're going to leave. When you hire someone, you plan on them staying for 10, 12, 15, 20 years. If you go under the expectation that they're going to leave, mm -hmm. then you're going to treat you're going to treat your staff differently. As far as staff, um, you know people. Um, obviously don't make a million dollars. Yeah. They stay in it because yeah. it's a great field. Um, it's an up-and-coming field. Um, it's within the nursing field because yeah. you're taking care of people. Um, what is your opinion on, on higher wages for people that work in the field of disabilities? So higher wages is, a thing, is, is definitely a, a, a big thing. Um, when we meet with other DSPs, direct support professionals,
from other states, mm -hmm. they get paid minimum wage. You got some people get paid seven twenty-five an hour. Still? St yeah, th that's the federal <coughs> minimum wage, seven twenty-five. And some of those will keep that federal minimum wage. Yeah. Um, the work you do, by far, should not be something that you should not go hungry if you work full time, flat out. Mm -hmm. uh, and to the other, so I would say that that. The pay, pay is, we, Vermont passed a law which was perfect, that they're able to pay our direct support professionals $14 an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, starting pay, which is great. It's yeah. still not enough. But to that, to that message, in Canada, Canada has the work they do is, um, it's the equivalent of state employees. They get paid close to $20 an hour, and you get, in Canada, you have your, your, you know, your medical be benefits are a lot different and better there. But there's the turnover is still high. So you ask yourself if they're getting Explain paid what more, that means, uh, turnover. their turnover, meaning people still quit at the same amount of rate as they do here. Yeah. So you ask yourself if they get paid twenty bucks an hour and they're still quitting at, at at the same rate as here, then what's the issue? The issue is your direct support professionals, your shared living providers, the people that do this 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 frontline work, need to be treated with dignity and respect that they deserve. Mm -hmm. If they get treated with dignity and respect and know that they're on the same level as everybody else in that team that supports a person with disabilities, they're going to stay because they're treated, they, they're, they're truly appreciated. Mm -hmm. So if you increase that true appreciation to your staff and you give them that dignity and respect and put them in the same level and the, sitting at the same table as everybody else, they're going to stay. Mm -hmm. So if they get paid really well, perfect. If they get treated with the same appreciation and dignity and respect as everybody else on the team, as it, it doesn't matter if you have a master's degree, it doesn't matter if you have a PhD, it doesn't matter if you have a high school education. If you're there sitting at the table, you belong at that table. So, so getting paid more is great. Getting uh, getting uh, getting treated with uh, the, the a level of you know expectation and and, and appreciation is even better. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, you bring up great points. Yeah. So, getting back to Grey Mountain uh, yeah. Support Services, what services do you guys provide? Good question. Uh, we are, um, how Vermont is set up is they have a system where they have um, a designated agency system. And the designated agency system is, you know, for instance, you have Washington County Mental Health here. Yeah. You got Howard Center, Chittenden County. Yeah. Um, you got Northeast Kingdom Human Services in the Northeast Kingdom. These are the designated agencies. These are the agencies are are um, they do they're designated to do the intake and they're designated to um, um, provide the services once the doors open. Mm -hmm. Greenmount Support Services. Um, there is uh, uh, we're a specialty service agency, mm -hmm. and there are six of us in the state. Uh, the specialty service agency. There's only six organizations within the state. That are specialty service agencies. Oh, okay. You have the designated agencies. There's 11 of those. Okay. So those are your default designated agencies. Yes. Um, they provide mental health services, developmental services, um, any of the you know the crises. They're the ones that 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 do that. Um, the specialty service mm -hmm. agencies, which Greenmount Support Service is one of them, we're designated to work statewide, mm -hmm. and we specialize in certain things. So to answer your question, Lawrence, what do we specialize in? Um, we specialize in that, you know, we work with, um, we work in the developmental services. We also work with people with traumatic brain injuries. And we also work with... And there's the, another TBI agency that I know of. There's a, yeah, there's a few. There's Pride, there's Choice, um, there's, uh, there's Robin Hill Farm. There's a few of them that are, that are out there, too, that, that, that do that. Um, and, and we also work with the elder care services as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and the piece that I talk about with the elder care services is that I say that we still institutionalize a portion of our population and we don't even bat an eye. That's the elderly. Yeah. The elderly are still segregated mm -hmm. and institutionalized today. And those are nursing homes. Mm -hmm. And we we that's a big problem. It's a so here's the thing is that like what we did where we deinstitutionalized, we closed down a branding training school in '93. Mm -hmm. um, that it's actually in the title, unless you need 24-hour care nursing, you shouldn't be in a nursing home. So you deserve to be a part of your community, and we also have services like that that are, that are very similar to what we do with, that we work with people with intellectual disabilities. We have, we have, um, we, you have group we, homes? We don't do group homes. 
That's still no that's, group homes in the state in the whole state. No, no, we don't. Greenmount oh. Support Services doesn't. Okay. That's a, our philosophy is that it's you want individualized services and you want individualized um, you want individualized uh, services and supports. Mm -hmm. So, so what so what we do is that we uh, we we contract out with we, we find high quality we find high quality people that are willing to open up their homes mm -hmm. to have somebody. Um, be a roommate with them and live with them. And that's what we provide for the, our elder care services as well. You don't need to be in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to if be If you in need a, those services. Unless you need it. Does Green Mountain Support Services help if a person needs a nursing care facility? Yeah. Would you guys help with those services? We would transition them into something what they, what they absolutely need. Mm -hmm. So that's that piece is that do you actually need 24-hour care nursing? Mm -hmm. If you don't, you should be a part of your community as well. You'd loot, we would help you move into somebody else's home. They would provide that one-on-one -on -one service with you, take you out to the hardware store, help you, know, you know, help you out to go fishing every day if you want to, and just go out and hang out with your buddies at McDonald's and drink coffee and, you know, and you know, complain about the world today or talk about <laughs> you know, what's you know, like uh, all these kids on their iPhones. You know, it's, it, the point is, is that we're able to provide... So that individualized support that you're not going to get in an institutional setting. Okay. So, uh, do you find? Do you want to ask a mm -hmm. question? Go ahead. You want to ask a question? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, <coughs> what kind of service did you offer people with special needs? Like, real, right. in the meat of stuff. So what we do is that we provide, um, and uh, what we do is that we provide services that are community based. So. We will help you find that what you do is we will help you find a, um, a home that matches your style of life. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we would do is then with it, w within that atmosphere, we would also provide you if you needed any like specific um, community-based services. So there's a difference between working with somebody in their 20s or working mm -hmm. with someone in their 60s. Mm -hmm. Working for someone in their 20s, we provide a level of um, you still get that that safe home atmosphere, yeah. but then again, our our direct support professionals provide you know a level of mentorship, and you know help you to you know what are like some of the culturally appropriate things to say and and, and whatnot in in, mm -hmm. in there. Um, if you're working with somebody in their 60s and 70s, you're pretty much set in your ways. You don't need someone in their 20s telling you how to live. You're like I know what to do. I'm you know it's like. So, you know, you might need some physical assistance or you might need some transportation assistance and, 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 and that stuff to have you access the community. But a lot of it is, is basically what we believe in as an, as an agency is um, that we are only as strong, we're strong and we're stronger when we have everybody has the ability and, uh, and desire to be a part of their community. We all know that one you know, that 80 year old farmer who doesn't want to leave his house, that's his decision. But the point is, 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 in, is installing that type of life on someone in their 20s who wants to access the community, access their neighborhood, mm -hmm. gets to have that ability. And that's what we provide. So, What's, your, what's the pros and cons with, um, do, do you think that there's pros and cons? I'm sure there's pros and cons to yeah. everything. But is there pros and cons? To work in the field of special needs, yes, no. Uh, pros and cons in working in our field. Yeah. Uh, I if would any. If any, I would say um, I would say that I, I could start with the cons. Is that that's it's a type of work that people, um, the general public, don't understand. They, it's there's limited. And so that's we, what we're trying to do within right. this show. We're trying yeah, to educate. Yeah. We. It's important for us, and know what we own that too. As 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 Green Mountain Support Services, and as all of all of us agencies, we own the fact that we need to start doing more education and advocacy on, on what type of work, mm. what 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 type of work we do in the community, and what type of work we do um, on behalf of other Vermonters. Mm -hmm. And with with that said. Uh, that's something that's a, that's a con is that there's there's a there there's a lack of general understanding mm -hmm. on what it is and there's a lack of understanding on um, how actually compared to an institutional setting the the cost of providing services individualized services we provide um, dwarfs the cost of if it was an institution. Uh, so, what do you mean by dwarf in this so, case? So I would say 
hypothetically speaking, if you compare us to um, an institution in, name another state, I don't know, Colorado, Massachusetts. Kansas, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. um, New York. Well, New York, they don't have institutions anymore. They have, they have some, people can some. choose to. Yeah. So, so, but the cost of running an entire campus, the infrastructure running an entire campus, mm -hmm. and then having all those people hired and, and, all, and, and everything, the cost of uh, per person to run that is, you're talking about 100 hundred thousand to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars per person. Mm -hmm. Where in our situation here, mm -hmm. yeah. it's a fifth of that or a third of that cost. Yeah. yeah. So that's the difference. Is that we provide individualized we individualized supports for 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 people, but we, and we also provide. Um, it's also from an economic perspective, it's cheaper. Plus the people we work with that we we help assist to be a part of the part of their neighborhood, is working. Mm -hmm. and working and, and actually becoming taxpayers. You have people that, are, that, that, that have full-time jobs that they wouldn't if you lock them away mm -hmm. and, and, and turn them into a them instead of a we. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll give you another point too, is that when I, was, when I did work overseas, I was in East Africa, I was in West Africa, I was in Southern Africa, I worked in Northern Africa, um, I worked in parts of Asia, I was in Pakistan and the Philippines. And, and, and in my times, I come there and people tell I don't belong there because I'm American. So they would want to try to find a way to fit me into their, their, um, their um, societal structure. Mm -hmm. So there's questions they would ask. Depending on the country, they would either ask you, um, what tribe are you from? What religion are you? Um, what's your father's name? Mm -hmm. These are some of the questions they would ask you to kind of define. In the Jewish religion, it's the same thing. Because if, for example, in the Jewish faith, if yeah. you go to, it's called Aliyah. If you want to live in Israel, yeah. they ask you right away, who's your mother? Who's your, because yeah. your mo if your mother's Jewish, you're Jewish. Yeah. But they ask you all kind of questions. Yeah. Well, in order to fit in. Right. And, and here, what we do in, so we have a similar question that we ask. Whether you go to like a, you know, like a 4th of July barbecue or you, you go to a, like a, a friend's party and you meet new people, they'll, all, they'll ask you here in Vermont, they'll ask you, what do you do for work? They'll ask you, they say, what do you do for work? That is our version of other countries' question of what is your value in society? So having a job doesn't, you know what? Having a job and making money on it is great. You make money and you're doing you, you're doing something. But the point is, is that we don't we we suppose if you don't make money on something, and you, but you really enjoy doing it. It's a passion. It's a hobby. You know, it's it's your it's a calling. You know, we'd, we'd call it something else. But the the piece of it is that when you when you have a job, no matter if you have no matter what your background or or disability is, is that. Um, when you're when you when you're working, you're a part of something bigger than yourself. So that there's a there's a statistic a statistic that shows that um, that, um, um, uh, that human um, human rights issues like uh, uh, you know um, crimes that happen against people with disabilities that are filled by adult protective services and whatnot, um, which is another yeah. show entirely. So what it shows is that, but this is, this is the interesting thing, is that 5%, uh, it's between 5 to 7% of these, the, um, the, the reports happen, happen in the workplace. Happen in terms of abuse? Working. Abuse. Of people with disabilities yep. and or elderly. Yeah, that mm. happen, it's, it's between 5 to 7% of them happen in the workplace. Why, what, okay, well, since you said that, yeah. why, okay, um, I mean, obviously a nurse or a direct care worker shouldn't be hitting a person with a disability. Right. Um, you know, why is that? Well, let me, so let me just make that comparison. If it's 5 to 7% happen in the workplace, that means 93 to 95% of it happens in the community of those reports. So what that means is that when you're actually a part of a, you're on a work site, mm -hmm. people don't see your disability more. You're part of the team. You have the same name tag as us. They, you see a lot of times when you might have a customer or someone at a, a grocery store kind of insinuate or make fun of somebody with a, um, that, that's different than them. Nine times out of ten, another colleague in that store 
will come up and stick up for that person or yeah, confront the customer. like they've done it on television. They've done scenarios. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why and having a job isn't a, is, it's, it's good to make money, but it's not about the money. What it is is that you're part of something bigger than yourself. A lot you're of people with special community. needs want to work and they want to be um, yeah. part of society. Um, okay, even if it's some, something as minute as bagging groceries, yeah. they're still part of society. They're wearing the same shirt, they got the same type of name tag, and nine times out of ten, their friend, their 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 coworkers will always stick up. Look for at them. the guy from I'm I'm bringing yeah. this up as a part of it. Look at the guy from uh, one of the people from Cosby show. Yeah. Uh, from the Cosby show. He was bagging groceries at Trader Joe's yeah. because he needed a job. Yeah. Not because he was a celebrity, but because yeah. he, you know, yeah. we're all part of society. Yeah. Yep. And we have to be treated as such. Um, Absolutely. And like I said, it has nothing. And, that, and the point of another thing that Greenmount Support Services do is that we do a thing that's called a one-page profile. Yeah. That every time we, we ever need to have our employees do it. And actually, it, what it is is that it's, it defines well, an, I, an ISP? Or is it no, no. Or? It's just a page that says, you know, who I am, you know, what, you know, um, um, you know, what people like about me, what I, you know, they, they have these quite, you know, things. So you're, you're looking at the person. We provide services to people. We don't provide services for diagnoses. So, ah. so that's the thing is that, and you know, and, and we don't, for us is that, is that people are people and, and we do the best to support that person and what they want to do. And we do informed decision making. We do supported decision making. We help them make the decisions, but we're not putting, we're not, we, and when it comes down to it is that when you talk about like an intellectual disability and you talk about the difference between intelligence and wisdom. Mm -hmm. Intelligence is an IQ, you know, it's like you can go on to talk about there's different types of, you know, there's an IQ, there's an EQ, there's a, there's a PQ, there's all types of ways. But, but ultimately is that it's not our job um, to fix people. That's, no, no one's broken. And that's the one thing I remember is like one of my, um, um, one of my, one of my nurse colleagues in my previous job, we were hiring a new nurse. And one of the nurses in the interview says, so talks about, um, you know, like, so what, you know, what, you know, what talks about patients. And my nurse said that I work for, she goes, they're not patients, they're not sick, they're people. Mm. And when you're in a hospital, you're a patient. But here in this community services, you're not a patient, you're a person. Because you're not in sick. In the Holocaust, for example, they put yeah. numbers on everybody. Yeah. He, here, you're a person. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, and that, and that's, that's ultimately is that point is that it's, and I and I would and I would talk to people about saying is that our job is to make sure that we provide genuine experiences for people to let them do what they want to do, because I would say you know what have you ever um, and I would bring this up into some trainings and I would say uh, and a degree doesn't mean nothing I said how many of you have actually sat in a meeting with someone with a PhD or a master's degree and as they left the room you said you know what, that is the dumbest smart person I ever met. Like, is this like these people, like, you think you know, but you don't. Mm -hmm. And how many of those people that you know who, there's that old, that old timey farmer that's, you know, that's up there in, you know, in northern Vermont someplace who is ashamed that he never finished the third grade, but you still go to him because he has the best advice. Mm. Intelligence has nothing to do with wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom is about getting experiences. And we can control, the one thing that we can control as an agency is the ability to make sure we are all able to create, to, to, to promote and, and, and facilitate um, experiences. And as you, the more you experience, the more wisdom you have. The more wisdom you have, the, 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 the better the stories are. The more the stories you tell, the more connected you are to people. The, the more the connected you are to people, the more you're gonna be missed when you're gone. And then ultimately, and we say this, that, the, that our job as Green Mountain Support Services, our job um, is, is that at the end of somebody's life, more natural supports come to their funeral than paid supports. Mm -hmm. you, the point is, is that our job as humans is, is to make connections and to be missed. And if we're not allowing that to happen, we failed as an agency and we failed as a system. What, um, <clears throat> What are the misconceptions around people with special needs when you first meet them? I, th I think it's uh, the misconceptions you have is it's, it's the same thing as your misconceptions you have with um, any other stereotype. Like if I see someone, if you know, like if you know, you, if you have a, if you have a, um, a stereotype with someone with a disability, you're going to assume 
you're going to create an assumption about that person. It's the same thing like if you meet someone from, um, if, you, if you meet someone from a different country or you meet someone with a different ethnic background, that we are, we, we are predetermined to make those decisions based off of the fact of what we know about that, that genre of stereotype. And it's, so I think that's, that's the biggest thing that I think um, I will personally always face, that I think we will all, to be honest, we'll always face, mm -hmm. is that we are, we're pre, we continuously have to struggle to fight against um, our, our preconceived notions of, of stereotypes, whether it be from people from, you know, different countries, different backgrounds, different religious backgrounds, different political affiliations. These are the things that we have to, uh, um, we consistently have to get over. So I would, I would take in the issue about disabilities as that same thing. And as an agency who, who uh, promotes the inclusion of everyone, um, primarily our job as Green Mountain Support Services is to continue that education and continue that, um, uh, that normalization that people are people. Okay. Um, um, television shows like The Good Doctor and so many others yeah. now on television, how do you, th how, in your opinion, how does the media perceive both negative, because this is what I spoke about yeah. in, in my talk, negative and positive within, um, within the, you know, how does television view people with special needs? I would say that this is, this is an opportunity that this gives us, this gives us, um, consistently an opportunity and a stage to to have those discussions. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing when you had um, uh, who was it? I Love Lucy or something where they talked about um, uh, the idea of intimacy. Mm -hmm. They never, they always had beds and two separate. Put the beds put apart. The but once you put the beds together that created the conversation. Uh, it's the same thing when you, when you have uh, you know, when you have a, a someone from a different, you know, um, cultural background, or someone from a different country, yeah. or, or or that that are becoming a, a star in a show, mm -hmm. it creates the the conversation to make it normal. Mm -hmm. So what I would love to see is that we own this moment now in 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 media to uh, help facilitate the conversations. When you hear people talking about the Good Doctor or the show Speechless. Or all these other these other shows that that they, they put somebody on oh, the in. Netflix. Uh, there's one about autism on Netflix. I forget the name of it. Yeah, it's oh, for, it. we can own those conversations. We can facilitate it. It doesn't necessarily mean we can walk up to strangers on the street and says, yeah. "Do you see the good doctor? What do you think about autism?" No, it's like when you hear people talking about it, that gives you permission. No, but what to do you think about um? um there's one show, no, there's but what do you think about a non-disabled? What is a person with, what's the name of the show? Teenage something. Oh, I, I'm not sure if that one's off there or not. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's like someone's special needs there and he's like, you know, trying to you know, interact with all the non-special needs, you know? Yeah, so what is your I opinion the on a uh, non-disabled, like the good doctor, yeah. he's not autistic, he's playing, he's autistic. playing autistic. What is your opinion on that? You know, um, it's it would be, and to be fair, since I don't have a disability, I don't feel comfortable making a statement on that. But I know that I would say that it's um, you, you. You always see it. You know, it's the equivalent of you know when someone is someone who is um, you know a, a uh, you know a, a Caucasian you know a, a straight white American male playing a different part of of a character that is from a. Uh, from a different background, it's the same conversations, and I always, um, I always, you I think always. There should be more disabled actors playing parts. So I'll give you an example. That's a good question. Is that um, if you notice, there is actually um, one movie that came out in '85, I believe, or '86. Uh, it was called Mac and Me. Yeah. Do you remember, remember Mac that. and Me? I remember that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That was so they talked about like the Rotten Tomatoes gave it like it's one of the lowest rated movies ever. Mm -hmm. But the one thing it said that it did that no other movie ever did since then, mm -hmm. other than being a complete rip off of E.T., but that's beside the point. The main character in there was a boy in a wheelchair. Oh. And okay. it was never brought up. No one even cared he was in a wheelchair. It was normal. Mm -hmm. it, they never he never there was never a thing about about him being in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. They never talked about him being in a wheelchair. He was just an actor. They could have picked 
that that movie did not rely anything about the main actor being in a wheelchair. It actually wasn't in the script. Mm -hmm. The kid was a good actor yeah. who happened to be in a wheelchair. It didn't matter. So that was one thing that we, that was back in 85. So that was. That's before over, the Americans with Disabilities Act. That was, and that was over 30 years ago that movie came out. And mm -hmm. you're, so a lot of people with disabilities thought, this is it. This is our moment. Now, it doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair. It doesn't matter what your disability is. You can still be cast in any role. Mm -hmm. But it didn't happen. So that's one mm -hmm. thing is that, I, that, it's that, that Mac and Me was a blip in the radar that shouldn't just be a blip. It should be that it doesn't matter if you're, it doesn't matter if you're blind. It doesn't matter if you're, have heart, you know, any type of disability. Um, that if you can play the role, mm -hmm. it shouldn't, that shouldn't, def that, that your physical appearance or whatever, if you have any type of disability, shouldn't define. Um, what, is your what are the future goals around Green Mountain Sports Services? What are you guys planning to do? In, um, I mean, you guys have done wonderful things. Yeah. You guys had that wonderful conference that yeah. we were a part of. So now, what is the future goals of Green Mountain Support Services? Well, the benefit of being a specialty service agency is that we can be extremely mission driven. So in our mission is that it's a, our, our title, it's like, our, it's like we empower our neighbors with disabilities to be at home in the community. So we focus on neighbors, we focus on community, we focus on the fact that um, we don't do segregated settings, we don't do congregate settings, we, you know, we believe that... Uh, Con what's a congregate setting? A congregate setting is like, okay, um, uh, you know, let's, you know, let's, um, uh, let's put everybody with a disability, like a sheltered workshop. Let's put oh. everybody... Oh, that's another, yeah. Yeah, let's put everybody with a disability and together. So one point that we do is that, is that um, we don't have, you know, the what's people... What's a sheltered workshop before you get into that? A sheltered workshop is, is where you would... You would basically sequester everybody with a disability into a, you know, an area to just do certain rope, you know, things like either you know making um, coat hangers or, or hat racks or or something like that, and they're only surrounded by other people with disabilities. So that's not how you might have you might have that whole room with somebody who wants to, um, you know, uh, get a job at a grocery store. You might have another guy who loves computers. The only reason why you're putting them all together in the same room is because they all have disabilities, mm -hmm. and and that uh, and, and and it's called piece work. It's yeah. called well, it's uh, it could be. I don't. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that phrase, but yeah, it's we just it's that sheltered workshop setting, mm -hmm. um, is. which is completely and utterly inappropriate because you're putting people together based off of their disability and not based off of um, what they can what do. they can provide for the rest mm -hmm. for their neighbors and the rest of their they, you know the the rest of the the town they live in. So yeah. 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 All right. So um, you've worked in the field of special needs. Um, yeah. Are you going to continue? Obviously, you're going to continue the mission of Green Mountain Support Services. Um, what is one message that you can give our viewers at home for those that want to work in the field of special needs? So I would say that it's um, that ultimately is that you want to find. Um, Nowadays, people are mission driven. You know, it's um, that the, we have to work hard as employers mm. um, to make people feel committed to an ideology. Uh, uh, people can quit on a whim. It's easy to, you know, it's like, you know, I don't like this place. And like, especially when we're working with like the people for me, I like, you know, Gen Xers and your millennials, and that you feel as though that unless. I feel as though that this agency is heading in a direction that I feel comfortable with, um, I'm going to stay. And, and that's ultimately what we feel is that as an agency, we believe, and, we, and we're, as I say, very truly mission-driven, that if, if we have some guardians who might say, you know what, um, I don't want the person, I, that I don't want my uncle or child um, to be a part of the community because they're going to get made fun of. Mm -hmm. And our response as Green Mountain Support Services is like, we're not the agency for you then, I'm sorry. Because mm -hmm. we believe everybody needs to be together. Yeah. Uh, and, and we believe that we focus on pe what, what gifts people can bring and not Because what Martin Luther King, for example, yeah. worked on um, you know, several things. The Poor yeah. People's Campaign, desegre desegregating people, yeah. um, 
you know, he got rid of the bathrooms, the, the yep. you know, whites only, yep. colors only, that yep. type of thing, to get people into the mix of things. Yep, absolutely. And, I, and, and, and that's what makes Greenmount Support Services um, a, a stand out, is that we're extremely vocal in the idea that people are people, and, and we, will, we will never, ever cater to mm. any segregated settings. Um, we will never ever cater to um, any any congregate workshops or any of that stuff. Okay. So and and it's good. But I would I would I would say too is I would add the note that sometimes you know like um, you know like if someone's a cancer survivor, um, they want to they 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 experience something very specific mm -hmm. that they want to hang out with other people. You know you know on a time to mm -hmm. actually. Uh, they want to hang out with people that, that understand that. For instance, people with traumatic brain injuries, mm -hmm. um, it's important for them to meet people with other traumatic brain injuries. They need that survivor group to, to, to share their story because not all of us, not all of us um, knows that. Not all of us can share that experience. Mm -hmm. But we give that, so there's, there's certain examples of that where it's, there's certain examples of that where it's, it's not a congregate setting, it's a meeting space. There's a difference between Forcing people into activities, mm -hmm. or having people um, congregate to meet to talk about an adv advocacy thing, or talk about issues of 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 emotional support as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we and we do that. We do that. We have self advocate groups. Um, you know, we have. You know, we work with our people with traumatic brain injuries, and you know, you know, setting up survivor groups and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and Ultimately, what we do is that we need to provide, uh, and what we do is we're, we're proud to say is that uh, people mm -hmm. people connect with people who have the same interests and likes and passions. Okay. We have one lady who uh, loves horseback riding. Yeah, because they have. Uh, d d does Vermont have? I'm sure Vermont. Do you? So you work with if somebody loves horseback riding. Yeah. Do you work with organizations within Vermont? Because I know it's a, there's a question in societies and. There's so what we would do is that we would that yeah we have a there's one there there's one farm that actually um, isn't catered to people with special needs. Uh, it has the ability to help people out that need that assistance, but it's open to everybody. Yeah. So we have a lady that was horseback riding with other people mm -hmm. that don't have disabilities. So she's hanging out with other people that love horses. Yeah. We have another guy we work with that loves rocks. Like he's like he's the kind of guy who is able to he can go to any bend in any river in Vermont and find rocks. He can sell for two hundred bucks a piece on eBay because he knows what to find because he loves rocks. Mm. Why the heck would he be hanging out with with other people that have a similar diagnosis than him? He has nothing else in common with him. He hangs out, he works for he works now with um he does um, classes at libraries and helps out people with the uh, Department of Agriculture and the Department of Forest and uh, the Forestry Department. Wow. Um, to work with them because he found other people who have a, a strong passion for geology. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, it's that's what it's all about. Now, as far as your uh, this is the last question, yeah. As far as your uh, employment service, yeah. Where have you found people employment? Because so employment is important for people. Yeah, especially. absolutely. We have a fantastic employment department, support employment department. We. Um, uh, per capita, we're one of the highest agencies that actually has the, more, the most people that we provide services for hired. And we see that uh, we work with like over almost uh, two dozen different, uh, uh, different uh, businesses right mm -hmm. now. And, and we do a thing that's called, and we, and we think it's just, you know, it's specific to our, our part, but we have, you know, we work with people with, um, they do like job carving and say, we can have people do this and this and this and this. And, and help you out with that. Uh, and but you know, and honestly, everyday services, we do job carving all the time. We do job so for people. Like for instance, I give you an example. Uh -huh. Sorry, is um, I have you know like I have one friend who's an administrative assistant, and she says, you know what, I know nothing about Excel. And you know, and her 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 boss said, that's fine. We'll find someone else to do Excel for you. That's job carving. Um, you know, for instance, uh, just today. Um, <laughs> um, I would, there, there's, there's a, there, there's a, there's a program that we do for, for mileage and, and I walked up what to, what do you mean mileage? Like we have a mileage reimbursement program that we, that, that we plug in instead of writing it all about by hand. 
Um, I, 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 you know, I told, I told my, uh, my HR um, colleague, I says, I don't know how to do this. And she goes, I'll do it for you. That's job carving. That part of my job that I should do has been carved away from me mm. for someone else to do it. Oh, so, so you guys pay people from, to have to travel? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh -huh. that's, that's standard uh -huh. in our agency. So, I mean, I, would, I guess the point I'm making is that, that job carving isn't spe specific to support employment. If you pull back, you talk to anybody in, you talk to anybody in, um, in any job, their job has been carved for them too. You might think of somebody in a coffee shop and you might have a, you know, you know, you might have a, a, a person who says, I can't use the can opener. Mm -hmm. Someone says, all right, I'll use the can opener for you. Like just as an example. And you might have somebody Oh, they else. have big can openers in restaurants, you know. Or huge. something like that. Or you might see, a, you might see somebody who's a dishwasher and, she, and they says, you know, I got Band-Aids on my hands that I can't wash the dishes today or, or something like that. And says, so says, all right, I'll do it for you. That's job carving. So job carving isn't specific to supported employment and disability. But if somebody, things, but, yeah. if somebody in your agency, uh, um, someone that you're helping, yeah. wants to say, oh, come here. okay, um, I want to learn how to be a chef, but uh, I know that there's school involved in that, but yeah. um, do you help people with yeah. that if they want to work in the restaurant industry? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think we, we see ourselves as though is that, that if somebody wants to do something, then that's something that we would, we would mm -hmm. absolutely um, work, work with. Knowing the attain. risks of certain things. It's a risk for everybody. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's like it's the yeah. point. Yeah. But, but no, some, no, of the research, some of the that. research yeah. I've done, yeah. there's a lot of countries yeah. and a lot of places that have restaurants with they hire people with special needs. And you know, and I and I'm a hundred percent. I think that's um, one of the worst things. In some other places, um, you you called it a theme restaurant. Yeah. Why is that? Because you have everybody with it. Yeah. If if they're if they're specifically hiring everybody with a disability, that's their theme, and they want. And I guarantee you're sitting there. You have somebody at home going, "Hey, let's go to that disability restaurant where everybody has a disability." But they might not use the word disability. They might use a, a more derogatory term, mm -hmm. and so. That the point is, is that 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 restaurant. So they should hire disabilities and other employees, not just disabilities. Yeah, but why? It's like the same thing. Let's hire all redheads. Right. You know, let's have our all redhead down. Let's hire all blind. Uh, let's have a blind restaurant. Let's they do a, in Israel. Yeah. So, but the point is, is that then the the, the that is <clears throat> you're making it a theme restaurant. Yeah. You're you're exploiting the disability, and you're not exploiting people's. So if you have, if let me ask you this: If you have everybody there that is that that with a disability that that can cook and is good at cooking, why are they there? They should go to other restaurants. If they have the same skill set as everybody else, mm -hmm. then yeah, absolutely. That that's a that's a in a way that's a sheltered workshop. In a way that's like oh, I didn't view it that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're exploiting somebody's disability. And some of them work in McDonald's. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Else. Um, yeah. So, what yeah, people with special needs working in f just fast food just because they're disabled. Yeah. Every, but people work at, it's not just disabled people that work in, at um, McDonald's. Everybody works at McDonald's. Yeah. You know? I have friends that work at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So it's There's not. No shame of it. it. No. No, not at all. God, I, I work at Wendy's. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us on this edition of yes. Able to Non Air. Before we end this edition of. Um, before we end this edition of Able and On Air, I just want to uh, say this program today is in memory of Lucy Torres of the Bronx. Miss Lucy Torres of the Bronx recently uh, passed away of heart failure. Miss Torres and other members of her, fa of her family continue to work in the field helping those with special needs in the community. Uh, starting as They started as DSPs and now they're managers in the field of special needs. Uh, Ms. Torres spent her life working for the RAIN organization of the Bronx and Catholic Guardian Society, part of Catholic Charities. Ms. Torres will be missed. She died at 88. Um, well, that puts an end to this edition of Able Then On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time.